Good afternoon to you ladies, to the gentlemen, to the boys, to the girls. This is your host, your guy himself, the one and only DLG Repping. And, um, oh, just bear with me. Now I have one of these bad boys. I'm going to show you, this. I'm going to show you guys, I'm going to share this with all of you all over the world. That's all you football fans. Here it is. If you can see it, there you go. Here's my card. And there's what I'm all about, yeah? Oops, let me just get my fingertips away from it on the edge. There you go. DLG repping. Exactly what I do. Now, I hope you've all had a good day. Or is it good morning or good evening? Wherever you're watching around the world. That could be in um, Bahrain, in Sri Lanka, or is that in Cote d'Ivoire, or is that in Switzerland, Denmark, you could be watching in New Zealand, you could be watching in um, Western Samoa, you could be watching in Canada, or Mexico, or Indonesia, you could be watching in Slovakia, um, Belarus, you could be watching in Poland, whether you're watching in Italy, watching in Belgium, watching in France, wherever you're watching, all you football fans are all welcome to my channel, and, ready to, and you're all prepared to... Leave a comment, leave your your messages of love and support in my comment section below. You're more than welcome to subscribe to my channel. Well, smash the thumbs up like on my channel. And um, yeah, you're definitely always more than welcome to subscribe to my channel. That's myself and I only DLG repping. All right, without further ado, let's get into the player ratings. That's the reason, that's the main reason why I'm here. Um... It finished Brighton over Albion nil, Arsenal one. That's our second win on the spin since um, the beginning of um, this season. Fulham and Aston Villa away and home respectively. And we've just got another back-to-back -back win. And um, what a performance. Let's go through the game itself. I think the first five, ten minutes, we started off brightly but created little. Um, then Brighton them created um, the first opportunity or they had the first um Effort on goal, which was off target, and then they had um, another three, four, and um, Leno made a good save at the, um, the near post. But for me, oh, Leno tried to turn into Bird Grobbola. <laughs> yeah, Bird Grobbola. Note that one down in your minds, in your diary. I said it, Bird Grobbola, by trying to juggle the ball. And he was dead lucky he got away with murder. And I mean dead lucky. Other than that, um, yeah, the first half, I thought Brighton were superior. We were flat. We lacked um, um, invention, creativity. And um, yeah, we looked um, rugged um, towards, um, well, after the first 20 minutes of that game. And Brighton would have deserved to be one new up. They sh they they would have deserved it. Yeah, they would have deserved to be one new up, and they should have been one new up with the opportunities they had. And um, it wasn't to, to be. Second half, Arsenal came out of the trap at the beginning of the um, second half, and I'll tell you what, Aubameyang was unlucky not to score from an um, Bakayo Saka. Yeah, Bakayo Saka assist for me, possibly our player of the season. The save that um, their goalkeeper Sanchez made. Wow, what a save from Aubameyang. And Aubameyang's pondering how he, on earth he did not score a, another Premier League goal. But such as um, good form, um, we did our best. Um, I think, like I said, came on and um, within 21 seconds. <laughs> yeah, I got 21 seconds to go. I got 21 seconds to go. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, he finds um, the bottom um, corner and it was a nice finish. Cut, used, the, used the defender as a decoy, 
curls it around him at the near post, keeper, no chance, good finish. And um, that was um, the winning goal, the only goal was in the game. And that, yeah, that pleased me. We moved up to 13th, but depending on games on hand, we could go straight back to 15th or the worst 16th. But we're not thinking of um, so much of the negativity. But at the same time, we have to be realistic. You know, we, just because we won two games in the spin, it don't mean that it makes up for a poor season. And it has been a poorly campaign yet again. However, we'll take this win. It wasn't, um, I don't know, it wasn't the best of, um, well, it wasn't the best of the performances, but it was um, a result, a three points, clean sheet, and, um, you know, confidence um, where it's due in some players. And we just have to move on to the West Brom game. And speaking of West Brom, I will be doing my preview on Friday afternoon or evening for the West Brom West Bromwich Albion v Arsenal game, so look out for that. Without further ado, um, let's get into our player ratings. And yeah, before I do, yeah, I'd like to still talk about um, the opportunities we created. And um, yeah, Bam Yang save, he had um, two more um, efforts on goal. And I thought the three young, young boys. In, Ro- in Smith Rowe, Bakayo Saka and Martinelli. They did well as a unit and they're developing and I don't think they deserve to be dropped. And it's debatable who plays in front of that three, whether it's Aubameyang or Lacazette. Well, <laughs> leave, uh, yeah, leave your thoughts in my comment section below. Who would you start against West Brom on Saturday? Lacazette or Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang? Or should I say Alexander Lacazette or Pierre Emerick Aubameyang? Leave your 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 thoughts and your opinions in my comment section below, please. I don't know, and um, it will be taken on board. Without further ado, let's get into the player ratings. Um, Bird Leno in goal made one good save and then started. Um, yeah, he made yeah he made one good save at the at the near post. Very comfortable, but I'll tell you what. There were moments with him, especially the the um, juggling act. I can understand you doing that sort of thing at four, five, six nil up, but not at nil nil. And he was dead lucky to get away with murder. And there were times where, when when he needed to release the ball to start up a counter attack, he was just too slow, just too slow at his um distribution with the, with the ball at his hands and feet. And that kind of worries me. Other than that, he was um, fairly solid um, with, his, with, with his catching of crosses and set pieces. So other than that, I'm going to get mark him down as a six and a half. You know, I'm just going to mark him down as a six and a half for me. Um, Hector Bellerin, he wasn't too bad, to be fair. You know, it don't, it don't make up for the last five and a half years of how poor he has been as a right back. And um, I've said that we need to sign a right back in that position because we're consistently weak there. The person that he's in Bellerin, he's only dare God knows why, what a titter rates because he is inconsistently poor. However, he was not too bad, I suppose. You know, there were moments where Bernardo Silva was physically too much for him in the air and um, causing problems on, on the ground as well. However, Bellerin got forward when he could. But for me, um, yeah, he was not too bad. Defensively, he had to make an interception, an important interception. Def- uh, offensively, yeah, I didn't, well, I don't, I, can't, don't, I don't know if he contributed much. Maybe one or two crosses. But I don't think he contributed much, as much. But I'm going to give him a seven for efforts. Rob Holding, um... Fairly competitive um, in the air. Um, in a physical battle, um, he held his own. Maybe not so um, conf- confident on the ball at his, on the, with the ball at his feet. <clears throat> now, other than that, um, again, not, not a bad game from him. Uh, made sure the defence kept a clean sheet. Played his part. And, um, yeah, he wasn't out of position as much. Not that I can think of. 
So I'm going to give Rob Holding a 7. Um, Pablo Murray, um, yeah, not too bad. Um, there were moments where he was forcing, he was playing long balls, that's, you know, and that's, and that's forcing the passes and he didn't reach an Arsenal um, shirt in white. Um, solid in the air. Um, could have been a lot more um, better with the ball instead of giving away long sloppy passes which which is trying to force passes to but I don't know Bakayo Saka or Martinelli on the left but other than that um, yeah he was not too bad he was he was quite steady I'm going to give him a 7 Kieran Tierney wow he kicked off where he, um, where he left off at um, home to Chelsea you know offensively well, he showed his pace against um, Veltman. Skinned him alive. Got a wicked cross. I think he got the cross in, but it was blocked. But it, it, it just shows to me that um, he had the beating of Veltman. Uh, defensively, um, towards the last 10 minutes, he was um, out of position and quite sloppy in... Um, well, in, in areas of his defensive game, which I don't associate with Kieran Tierney. Overall, he was... Um, yeah... Fantastic. Well, yeah, he was um, fabulous, should I say, in that sense. Um, I'll give him an eight. I'll just give him an eight just for, you know, for an overall good game. The last 10 minutes, you can see that he was quite tired and, and um, yeah, it got to him. Fatigue got to him, but um, he, de he deserves a, a, a rest from training. I'll tell you that now because he's put in a hell of a shift overall. Well, I'm going to give him an eight in this game. Um, the midfield two, El Nene six, sloppy in in his in ball possession gave the gave two sloppy passes away, which could have led to um, well Leno making a serious save or picking the ball out of his net. He was he was not um, observing where his teammates were when he had the ball. I didn't think he did enough. Um, Going forward as such. Maybe there were some forward passes. There were a couple of forward passes on the positives. But for me, he was sloppy. Out of position in the role that he was playing. And um, yeah, I didn't think he did enough for me. In that midfield battle. And um, for me, um, I think he got booked. Well, did he get booked? Let me have a look. No, he didn't get booked. But um, yeah. Just... Um, Nah, just yeah. He, well, he mainly covered ground, but um, not enough tackles in, and um, more sidewards and the backwards passes as we associate Mohamed El Nene. So he gets a six. Granite Shaka, mm, not bad. I don't think he gave the ball away as much. Um, or. <clears throat> well, he did, but not maybe not as much as um, previous games over the years that he's been at a club. Overall, he's never been good enough. You know, we needed um, someone. We need someone alongside Partey who's got the energy and and the legs in the midfield as Partey, because Partey will be probably the best of the the two in the defensive midfield matter. But um, it's not Shaka. He's He'll get a banging. He'll get a banging free kick once every eighteen months. It, it seems like. But well, other than that, nah, not not for me. Um, six and a half, and he did have a free kick in the first half that went over the bar. I don't think he um, got the um, accuracy um, right. Unlike um, Saturday, he got the accuracy spot on. But for me, nah, not one of his best games. So I'm going to give him... I'm going to mark him down as a six. Bakayo Saka. Um, he came off injured. But what a good game he had. Um, superb run. He turned the defender. Ran ran away from him with his pace. Found Lacazette. Took a couple of... Took two touches and it was in the back of the net. And that's because of Bakayo Saka's um, quality work. <clears throat> in what he did and in quality play. For me... He just gets better and better. Even in the first half, he he wasn't on the ball as much. But my word, his work rate, his hunger, desire, determination was there 
to um, close the ball down, close um, the Brighton player down, any Brighton player down. He was determined to win the ball back for his team and battle. And that's what we need, battlers at tough away fixtures such as Brighton and West Brom. They're going to be still... Well, West Brom's going to be tough. You know, let's not let... Let's not um, let um, Leeds United um, tell us otherwise. We're going to have to do our job ourselves. Leeds are not going to do it for us. But I'm saying um, with Bakayo Saka, he's battling, was there to be seen. So I'm going to give him... Yeah, I'm going to give him a seven and a half. No, I'm going to give him... No, a nine overall. Second half, he, he was our... Uh, our best performing footballer in the way that he controlled the ball, the way he wanted the ball and um, created that goal for Lacazette. Not just that, but his overall play was just uh, magnificent. He gets a man of the match for me, a nine. Emil Rose-Smith. Um, I wouldn't say it's one of his best games. Um, he did link up play. Um, he did um, get into the pockets where We've, we've been asking the number 10 to, to do such a thing. And he's done just that for me. And, um, yeah, he was confident in in his ability on the ball. But I didn't see enough for me. And um, in that moment, um, yeah, he, he gave the ball away in, in during the game in certain moments. And um, he was a little bit sloppy, just like El Nene was. However, I'm going to give him a... Six and a half. I thought he could have done a lot more. Gabriel Martinelli, not one of his best games. He was rather quiet during the time that he had on that pitch. But uh, at least, you know, when you talk about the pressing game and you associate that with an Arsenal player, if it's not Saka, it's Martinelli. You know, he does it superbly well. The way that he closed defenders down, he's closing the goalkeepers down. Even Eddie Nketiah does it well. But uh, on the ball, Eddie Nketiah lacks the quality that Bakayo Saka and Martinelli have. And for me, it would have been nice to get uh, Martinelli on the ball because he can do something for me. You know, that pace, aggression, he, you know, you name it, he's got the lot to succeed. And I feel that um, he offers us um, a different dimension. Other than that, um, a six on Martinelli, not one of his best games. Pierre Emerick Aubameyang, if I'm being honest, nah, not in the first half. Definitely, I, I can't remember him having more than four touches of the ball in the first half. He never saw much of the ball in the first half. Maybe I'm over exaggerating, but he never saw much of the ball in the first half. You know, it was non-existent. It was non-existent. You know, very quiet, and um, at least. Try, you know, at least um, try and um, put pressure on the defenders and and on on the goalkeeper. Now he done it in play in bits and parts, but he needed to do it as much as possible. And that's the difference between him and Martinelli. Martinelli, Enketia, even uh, Martinelli, Saka, and even Enketia will put pressure on um, goalkeepers and defenders to get the ball back. And I didn't see that enough from um, Aubameyang, and that's what's disappointing. But at the same time. There was no service in the first half. There was no like service for him. I understand that, but he's got to do his part. He's got to do whatever he has to do to help himself, and he didn't do his part. So I'm going to give him a free. Right substitutions. Right from us, from our point. Let's see. Um, Alexander Lacazette. He came on in the 66th minute, got a goal, um, held the ball up. Um, body strength brought um, his teammates into play and um, I thought um, yeah I thought he had a good yeah I thought he um, did alright when he came on I'm going to give him a 7 Danny Sabayos a 3 ineffective for me looked um, sloppy on the ball he always looked like he was going to give the ball away in fact I think he did give the ball away a couple of times or more than a couple of times and um, just didn't do enough for me to um, inspire us to look dangerous um, as an offensive out uh, outlet. Free, Ainsley Maitland-Niles. He came on with a with a minute or two to go, and um, 
if we're being real, I didn't see the point of him coming on. Well, he only came on to shore up things you know, in the midfield and around the defensive um, areas, but I'm not going to mark him down. So, um, let's get on to the manager, Mikel Arteta. Um, he, he was bold. He stuck with... Um, yeah, he stuck with um, his de um, decision to go with a 4-2-3-1. Brought on Lacazette and um, that paid dividends for me. And, <clears throat> you know, we kept it um, defensively tight at the back. With Murray and Holding, Bellerin and Tierney all putting their shift in. Well, mainly Bellerin, Holding and Murray, they put their shift in. Uh, Kieran Tierney did until the last 10 minutes, until he was um, caught out of position. Um, yeah, he knew when to change it as uh, Brighton were dominating the midfield areas towards the end of the game and um, he sussed that out and I'll credit him for that. So I'm going to give him an 8. He just about gets an 8 for me. The ref, um, yeah, he let the game flow. There were, there were one or two naughty tackles and um, Duncan... Johan Bakash um, had to be booked. Uh, I think um, they weren't um, such they weren't um, real naughty crunching tackles as such. He allowed the game to flow and um, didn't think he. And then he saw VAR. Then he went to VAR to have a look at um, Lewis Dunk whether he was getting fouled, but. Um, I think he got the decision right, so I'm gonna give him a four. Otherwise, that um that concludes um, my player ratings, including the subs, the management, and um the ref. And I'm once again I'm gonna say, ladies and gentlemen, to the boys, to the girls, thank you for listening, thank you for watching, thank you for tuning in and putting up with me. Um I hope you enjoyed uh, my channel and um yes, um, be aware. I have my business cards. Oh, well, I love my, um, yeah, my YouTube business cards, should I say. And um, I look forward to dishing them out and sharing it with um, you amazing football people wherever you are around the world. Other than that, um, do enjoy your day. And remember, um, if you've got any, if you've got anything to say about my um, player ratings, the management rating, if you agree with that, or do you agree with um, the ref rating, leave it in the comment section below. Please uh, smash the thumbs up like button as many as possible. And, um, well, the thumbs down um, as zero as possible. <laughs> and um, please help me to subscribe to my channel, to myself. That's, my, that's me and only, me and one and only DLG Repping. And um, speaking of subscriber or subscribing to my channel, um, Abdi Rahman Hassan, massive shout out to you, yeah? You're my 75th, yeah, 75th subscriber. And um, I saw it earlier this morning. Sorry, I couldn't um, do a morning video so I could have shouted you out earlier, but now I'm shouting you out now. And um, all blessed for the love and support, yeah? Encourage your friends and your relatives to do the same as well. Yeah, the more subscribers, the better. Not just um, Abdi Rahman Hassan, but um, many of you all over the world, yeah, who are watching this channel right now. Please help me to um, smash the thumbs up like button. Um, leave a, a message of full um, your opinions in my comment section below and um, help me to subscribe to my channel, please. You know who I am. DLG repping and let's keep this channel growing and I'll do the very best to keep the football context as um, fresh and updated as possible. Otherwise, I'm out of here. Enjoy your day and do be nice. Just two more sleeps. 2021's here. Be nice and all thumbs up. Bless. Oh, peace again, love again and bless again.